So, uh, episode five of um, Pride in the Lions. I'm delighted to be back with uh, David Flatman. Last time I saw you, David, you were about to cycle from John O'Groves to Land's End, and I'm very pleased to see that you're back in front of me in one piece. Well, at least I hope you're in one piece. I'm just about in one piece. Um, I think my body, well, we're we weakening a bit on now. My body's almost recovered. Uh, not quite. My knees are still quite sore. Uh, my hands are almost completely numb and very, very weak. Just uh, they're taking a, time, a bit of time to come back, I guess, just because I've been leaning on them for so long. By the, the last couple of days of the ride, I couldn't change gear with my with the correct hand, so I was having to reach across. I didn't have the finger strength. So I was having to reach across the other lever, across the handlebars, at, sometimes at pretty high speed downhill, and pull the levers across with the palm of the other hand. They had no grip, left, and I still haven't really. So um, I just made coffees and teas for the office and uh, was laughing at myself at how difficult I was finding it to hold three cups two in one hand and one in the other and then the ones in the left hand just began to go and I couldn't stop them and I just poured coffee all over my hands and burnt myself and dropped it all walking into the office which everyone found hilarious except the cleaners um, so the hands haven't recovered yet but um, they're on their way it's my mind that's damaged <laughs> It's a tough old, tough old gig. It, it, yeah, it is a tough old gig. How, how, how far did you travel and how long did it take you? Officially, it's 982 miles in nine days. My little computer tells me it was, it was a bit closer to 1,000 miles than that in nine days, but whatever, it's, um, you average about 110 a day, 109 a day, and very, very difficult. So John O'Groats to Land's End on a road bike, um, even the really quick guys who've been cycling for a long time and who don't weigh very much and very good at cycling found it pretty uncomfortable. Um, but you get in in the evenings, generally sort of mid-evening, you get all your stuff done, you find your tent, you get your luggage sorted, you pack down for the night and you, you have to shovel food in, try and sit through a briefing where they prepare you for the next day of hell. And I couldn't make it through all of those briefings. I was just falling asleep at the table broken man and I would just walk back to my tent try and lose consciousness on the floor which is quite difficult get up at quarter to five every day five o'clock every day and um, get back on the bike and do another 11, 12, 13 hours it was quite um, it was a real challenge I'm glad we've done it, we raised some good money how did, um, what about in terms of direction though, how did you make sure that you were going in the right direction? They signpost the route, it's not a luck so there's a lot of riders but you do find yourself on your own sometimes um, so you there are signposts every half a mile or every 500 yards for a thousand miles and it's amazing the setup threshold of the company that run it and it is the setup is unbelievable it's unbelievable how much effort they put into the food the tents the organisation the signposting just incredible what they run um, every camp you get to is just is, if it wasn't so awful it would be the best music festival you've ever been to because you're field below the tent some some people who are quicker on a bike than I am got to enjoy that I got to enjoy about a day and a half of that and the rest of it was um didn't see much sun didn't see much light but um in my free time but it was yeah you luckily I didn't get lost a lot of people miss signs because they're so exhausted yeah. they miss the sign and one guy did an extra eight miles one day but as he puts it that's the round thousand so uh, by the time he finishes uh, he didn't mind too much. I think 18 more miles would have killed me. I think I, I was done. But it was for a good cause, wasn't it? It was for the Bath Rugby Foundation. Yeah. How much money did you raise in total? It was for the foundation, and we're all we are all very chuffed to have raised a lot of money for them. Um, I think I think at the moment, money's still coming in, and yeah. people are still very welcome to donate. Um, it's Virgin Money. You search for heavyweights, and you find us for good reason. And I think we're over ninety thousand now, ninety thousand pounds. So total so it's um it's a mega payday for them but it's never enough you know they do a huge amount of work and whatever we raise they can use very very quickly so we need to do more really and how long will that um virgin money account stay open for i don't know as long as people keep giving it will stay open so Good, um, right. well, we must keep giving or we'll, we can lie and say it closes in 48 hours and think about the kids yes one of those two answers yeah as the americans would say it about elections, vote early, vote often. So yeah. Give early, give often. Yeah, yeah. Right then, now we're going to move on to um, um, the, uh, the Lions tour, which of course um, I've enjoyed your company a couple of times. And then, and then while you're away, we, we, we swapped over to the capable hands of Lee Mears. Tiny little hands of Lee Mears. Well, I thought when Shane Williams got called up, I thought if Summer Valley FM would fly me over 
and I took Lee with me, you might get a game. Yeah, I reckon. I reckon if my mum had a pair of boots and she was nearby, <laughs> no. This whole flying people over locally, I don't know. I think even if it, I don't think that's why they're doing it. No, no. It can't be. But for me, it's just don't even say it because the merest hint that you're giving someone a lion's cap or a, a, a place on a lion's tour because they were quite nearby. I mean, I'm not having that. You, it's a small world these days. You can get anywhere in a day or two days. So I think you know they'd be well advised to stop saying he was local <laughs> well he did um, and he did a pretty good job didn't he actually in a game where oh, well, he, he, yeah he, he, he's he one of ten players they could pick if they put Strettel or Ugo Monia or yeah, any of the England wingers on there or any of the other any of the other Irish guys I mean there are lots of people that could do that job um, he's a special player very very special and you don't lose that magic and we saw him didn't really get to cut loose in the first game he played but he you saw glimpses of just beating one or two players like they weren't there whether he's 36 or not I mean a yeah, special guy once in a generation really so it was all about Saturday um, the big start and um, the Lions um, well it was a bit of a nail biter in the end wasn't it 23 points to 21 but, nail, uh, yeah. but the Lions won so um, surely we must be celebrating that yeah who cares if it was close and we were lucky you know, you know I don't but um, very very it was a hell of a game it had everything really I was actually the one thing I was surprised was how little niggle there was out there There was, I know there was a bit of there was the odd kick in the head and all that but I mean he has been proven not guilty so we have to label that an accident um, but I think it was the game was almost so quick the referee Chris Pollock enforced such a sort of brutal line at the breakdown that basically left the Lions players certainly but most of the players are almost terrified of competing on the floor mm. which is what they're used to doing 20 times a game at home massive adjustment from the players but what it did produce whether we like it or not it produced a game with a lot of quick ball so it was actually very very watchable and it just it just as a game had everything I'm not sure how the next Test 2 tops that to be honest as long as the Lions win it I don't care if it tops it or not but uh, I do feel now that the Lions could go on and win this 3-0 well the, the Australians started um, strongly um, uh, but not least due to the, uh, the injuries that they were um, experiencing in the game and interesting how we talked quite a lot about the Lions injuries in the build up to this first test but the Australians seems to be competing to get up to our injury count um, certainly by the 50th minute um, they'd moved their flanker into the centres um, uh, Alex Cuthbert went over for that try and um, I must confess I thought I was about to start celebrating because I thought it was going to be plain sailing for them but it wasn't was it? Yeah I thought we'd bash them after that to be honest what I really enjoyed was um, as soon as Hooper got put into the centre the very first thing Sexton called was an inside ball to Cuthbert to test that defence because if you run straight at an open side playing in the midfield it's Christmas day for him because he can tackle all day long what he doesn't want to have to do is adjust on his feet anyone out of position doesn't want to be stretched they want to be confronted and conf- confrontation is actually a lot easier to deal with um, but they stretched him straight away gaps were there and it was actually brilliantly finished by Cuthbert who up until that point had been possibly quiet enough for a few, pe- few people to be thinking Tommy Bow might start next week but what he does do is when he gets a chance my god he finishes him I mean big old boy but his mate George North put him in the shadows a little bit with one of the well that try that he scored is going to be played replayed and replayed and replayed as part of the highlights reel for the rest of his life I would have thought incredible try so after 50 minutes then it was 20 points to 12 the Lions were um, uh, in the lead but, but the Australians pegged it right back to 23 points to 21 right at the death and we, we saw Curtly Beale the renaissance man a man who was out of the reckoning at the start of the of the tour came uh, came on and, and nearly had that chance for glory and I must confess even though I'm a, a, lo- a loyal Lions fan I didn't feel sorry for him when I saw him slip up it's Is funny wrong with me? no I felt sorry for him too and um, you know I don't know Curtly Beale from Adam but I know a lot of guys that do know him and he's had a few issues this year but they all all like him and some really really good men really like Curly Beal and that says a lot and um, one thing I did notice I'm not I promise I'm not doing and I told you so but he went to 
everyone was slipping over mm. and I think he even slipped at one point we went into a rut and I saw that he was wearing rubber studs you know mouldies or blades or whatever but they weren't proper studs and I hate that I always hate that people don't wear proper studs unless it's rock hard and bone dry because you just get no purchase you know I, I, I never understand why people do it um, and he, as he was crouching down to take that kick, I remember thinking, clean your studs out, son. You know, the big one. I would, all, you know, all, before every scrum of my whole career, I'd clean my studs out just in case that was the reason I struggled, you know. And I remember thinking, well, he's so talented, he probably doesn't even think about stuff like that. And he is. He was brilliant with the ball in hand. He changed the game. But I did, to a point, feel very sorry. As a bloke, I felt very sorry for him. But when you're that good a player, you bounce back. And it's funny. Because if I was the coach, he'd be the first person I picked for next week. The very first person, the person with the biggest point to prove, you know. So, um, yeah, poor fella. Normally, if uh, if the Lions had lost by two points and had a chance to win it with the last kick of the game, I suppose there'd be something very British about us to pretend that actually it was all a Pyrrhic victory and um, we'll do better next time. The, f- the fact of the matter is the, the Lions did win, but it almost feels like Australia are now the favourites going into the second test. Is that the way you read it? I think... Um, no, I don't feel like that. I feel like, who cares whether it was close and lucky, we won, they lost... So they're at home doing their best not to lo- not to be the first team to lose a series to the Lions in 16 years. So the pressure's on them. The pressure there's pressure on the Lions, of course there is, but there is absolutely more pressure on the Aussies because the Lions can lose this game and still win the series. The Aussies cannot. So for me, this is a, a big, big week for Robbie Deans and his squad because. They may have come close, they may have felt what they had to get the game won, but they know as well as any they know as well as we do. It means nothing if you haven't scored as many points. So what you might have achieved means nothing next to what you have or haven't. Um, the news came out in the last twenty four hours that Paul O'Connell's gonna miss the rest of the series. How big a blow do you think that's gonna be? Massive blow. Massive blow. Amazing bloke. Someone that even the best players in Great Britain and Ireland look to for reassurance on the field. Very good in the line out. His work rate on the weekend was unbelievable. Mm. Just his work rate. I mean, I don't know who'll come in. I expect Parling will come in. Parling has also a very high work rate. I think he's probably even stronger in the line out. For me, O'Connell has a presence that O'Driscoll aside, you might say O'Driscoll is not quite the player he was. He's still insanely good not quite the player he was O'Connell is the player he was so for me he's the he was really the top gun on the field for me and to lose him is big as big as it would have been for Australia to lose Horwell except he didn't get banned <laughs> because he lost his balance <laughs> and stamped accidentally um, I thought Alan Wynne jones had a very good game as well alongside um, O'Connell um, obviously the headlines were made by George North but um, who were your other standout performers in that in that first test? Alex Corbacero was outstanding. Um, as soon as he got drafted out, I thought to myself, he's going to start the tests because he's an aggressive scrummager. He seems to make people uncomfortable in the scrum at that level. Um, you'd almost say he's more dominant at international level than he is at club level. Um, that might change. He hasn't played a lot of club rugby the last two years. That's probably why we think that. But... Um, he was. I thought he was exceptional. I thought Tom Youngs was better again. I mean, just, just unbelievable, just irrepressible work rate. Just seems to be powerful. He could play for five hours and be still powerful. Just a naturally powerful guy. But um, someone wrote recently that because of his height, he's able to hit rucks with venom. I don't agree with that. It's not because of his height. It's because of his attitude and the power he's worked hard to create in his body in training. He, hit, he hits rucks better than anyone else in world rugby I think I mean he's just maiming people hits things so hard and doesn't stop hitting them hard I just love the way he plays and it played massively into his hands that the Australians for some reason didn't compete at a line out for half an hour which is bizarre four or five line outs Tom Young's had a free throw when they knew ok he'd been throwing well but they knew the Lions line out was a weakness coming into that game Australian defensive line outs have always been strong always and they just didn't. They didn't compete for 29 and a half minutes in a lineup, which just staggered me. And it gave the Lions all the confidence and momentum they needed to 
bizarre decision. They gave them the front of the line out. That's fine. The Lions just kept taking it and taking it and keeping the ball and working up a lead. You know, I just I can't believe they gave it to them so easily. Well, one of the standout performers, as I mentioned, was, was George North. We, we have to recognise as well the um, contribution of Israel Folau. And do you think this series could become known as the battle between those two wingers? Yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? I mean, I love watching them go against each other. I don't think I've seen any back in the world as good under maybe Matt Perry before he retired or Matt Burke as good under the high ball as Folau. I mean, incredible on the move under the high ball incredible talent Um, it's just great to watch because they're both they're both clinical and there's lots of wingers around and three outside backs who are clinical and good finishers and got a bit of confidence about them but the fact that they're just such massive freaks (laughs) makes it even better you know it's just more fun watching heavyweights go at it than it is Mm. flyweights you know if they're really going to go for it so they've both got the power to administer killer blows at this level and it's just brilliant to watch I love it so you think we can expect referees to keep this quick ball um, mentality going? No, I, I don't think any ref in the world will referee the breakdown as hard as Pollock did last weekend. When I say referee it as hard, effectively outlaw contest for the ball from the defence. Um, so we could well see a slower game this weekend and in Test 3. Um, I just think because it couldn't get much quicker. You know, the game couldn't be much quicker than a game where defences are actively encouraged not to compete for the ball on the floor. You know, it's... Um, it was uh, bizarre to watch and he's been criticised heavily um, and rightly I must say because actually enforcing your own version of a law which is against what everyone else on the, everyone on the field has been playing and you know that is a bit counterproductive in a sporting sense it's not very sporting but actually I presume that both teams management setups will have done enough research on him and I have to presume that that's not Chris Pollock has refereed the breakdown like that so players have to be ready for these things now we're having this chat before the Melbourne Rebels game which is going to be the last midweek game of this tour Um, given what happened in the last midweek game against the Brumbies do we actually care whether the Lions win or lose this game oh we care yeah we care we always want them to win Um, and there are guys there that are looking to get into the test team so Dan Lydiot's captain against the Rebels he's not going out there to make up the numbers he's going out there to get in the test team you know so there are there are definitely places up for grabs in that team I don't think Mike Phillips hit the heights we've seen him hit mm-hmm. last weekend and I think his place is under threat Alex Cuthbert finished brilliantly I think his butt I think he was quiet for the rest of the game so his place is under threat so Manu Tuolangi's back there or thereabouts you know he struggled to leave a guy like him out so it's not a nothing game it's very important ultimately we want them to win does it matter if they don't not really not really it's all about the tests on a trip like this if you win all three tests and lose every midweek game it's a successful tour so I think um, it is all about Saturday but there'll be a lot of guys putting a huge amount of importance on this Melbourne game within that squad it is all about the Saturday can't get much closer than last Saturday no have you got a feeling in your water about which way you think it's going to go I just hope the Australians don't pick a decent goal kicker again that was perfect that was, that was lovely of them um, I still think the Lions will win I still think the Lions will win and I think they'll wrap up the series on Saturday I think they've got too much power I think they'll have learnt a lot I think what didn't do them any favours was the scrum went badly for the last 20 minutes yeah. of the game and that really really turned the game gave the Aussies a lot of gave the Lions a lot less momentum but gave the Aussies a lot of confidence and put a lot of aggression back into their game and actually all the Lions really had to do was stand up and the, the Australians were really trying to close that gap really trying to crowd out the English front row and not let them get extended into a decent shape after they'd engaged and the Lions front row sorry and they, the Lions front row effectively allowed them to do that what they should have done was stand up walk it back and say we want a gap and we want to hit them and if they'd done that they might have won by more I think Saturday will be excruciatingly nerve wracking but I can't wait and I can't see the Aussies winning because in fairness whilst the Australians may have learned a lot from that test and will be better prepared than they were having had no games going into that first test actually it's only fair to believe that the Lions are going to be every bit better prepared um, and know what's about know what's ahead of them yeah well they've had a game the Lions have had a game together too so I think um, in terms of prep you, you know it's not the first time these guys have played in a year it's you know everyone's prepared everyone's, they're now battle harder they know what to expect 
and it makes it that's why test two and three are always so interesting test three will be really interesting if the Aussies won there's a, there's a chance that it might not be that interesting if the Lions do the job this weekend but um, I love watching teams playing against each other who know what to expect because the other teams have to either just do it better and more brutally or they have to find another way around things so it's just very interesting to watch the last time the Lions won it was a dead rubber actually that's not strictly true is it because the last time the Lions won it was on Saturday but the time in, the, in the South Africa tour it was a dead rubber Yeah. this one's going to go the distance if it does go the distance um, do you think the Lions um, would be able to win in game three if they've lost in game two yeah yeah. I think it would be hugely more difficult I think if Australia won this weekend I'd back them to win next weekend as well but I don't back them to win this weekend <laughs> so I think, I think the Lions will win the series 2-1 or 3-0 from this point well we're in bullish mood let's yeah we hope, are let's hope we're as it's bullish. easy for back here isn't it <laughs> it is yeah let's hope we're as in bullish mood when I see you this time next week look forward to it cheers thanks cheers. David